So, what are these uh, Imperial Japanese Army Bicycle Troops? So, the Japanese used bicycle tactics in their hugely successful but largely unsung invasion of Malaya, which is modern-day Malaysia and Singapore. The British colony of Malaya occupied an equatorial peninsula with the island city of Singapore at its southern tip. The British had extensively fortified Singapore and the surrounding straits, expecting a naval attack. Their widely publicized plan was that Singapore would withstand a siege for months while a relief force sailed from Great Britain. Recognizing a losing proposition when they saw it, the Japanese chose to instead attack through the back door. So here we see Japanese bicycle troops advance in Malaya past a burning British strongpoint. The sound of a single squeaky chain, a rubbing brake pad, or a wheel rolling on the rims is bad enough. But by the dozens and the hundreds, they sounded to the beleaguered, undermanned British troops like the lightweight Japanese tanks. Time and again, Japanese bicycle infantry advanced past abandoned British defensive points. Broken down bicycles were an unexpected psychological weapon. Japanese troops trained to move lightly and quickly. They practiced riding long distances in large groups before the invasion. But when they boarded their transports, they left their bicycles behind. Having done their homework, the Japanese knew that they could find thousands of British bicycles in Malaya. After coming ashore hundreds of kilometers north of Singapore in a largely unopposed landing, the Japanese troops requisitioned bicycles from the local Malays. Japanese troops rode British bikes during their lightning invasion of Malaya. The majority of the bicycles in Malaya would have been colonial British exports. The Japanese would requisition bicycles from civilians and ride them until they broke, and often after they had broken too. Despite transport, scheduling problems, and sighting of the invasion force by British reconnaissance aircraft while en route to the landing area, the initial landing took place at 0215 local time, December 8, 1941, one hour, 20 minutes before the attack on Pearl Harbor. The landings were highly successful and largely unopposed except at Kota Baru, where the expected stiff resistance was encountered. The British had previously anticipated the precise invasion landing points in a 1937 study done by the then General Officer Commanding of Malaya, Major General W.G.S. Dobie. He theorized that a future assault would take place during the northeast monsoon season, which is from October through March, when bad weather would limit the reconnaissance capabilities of the defenders. Matador, a defensive plan based on Dobby's work, was formulated but never executed because the British government did not want to violate Thai sovereignty without a prior declaration of war. Within four days of their landing, 5th Division had advanced from Singora through the town of Jitra to capture the RAF airfield at Alor Star, nearly 100 miles away. 
Using flanking techniques developed by Yamashita staff, the 25th Army swept over town after town and airfield after airfield. There were numerous obstacles to the advance, such as the dense jungle, long supply lines, oppressive heat, and torrential rains. But the quickly overrun enemy positions provided tons of so-called Churchill stores. Food, ammunition, trucks, and fuel left by the retreating British. By the 11th of January 1942, the invasion force had captured Kuala Lumpur. Influenced by the intense heat and impassable jungle, Japanese planners decided from the beginning to use bicycles rather than horses as a means of troop and light material transportation. This decision allowed the foot soldiers to travel farther, faster, and with less fatigue. Due to the number, vast number of rivers on the Malay Peninsula and the British propensity to destroy the more than 250 bridges they crossed during their retreat, bicycles allowed the infantry to continue their advance, wading across rivers, carrying their bicycles on their shoulders, or crossing on log bridges held up on the shoulders of engineers standing in the stream. The British could not escape the troops on bicycles. They were overtaken, driven off the paved roads into the jungle, and forced to surrender. The constant pressure and relentless pursuit was psychologically devastating to the defenders, a true blitzkrieg, Japanese style. The Japanese southern sweep continued, supplied by captured stores and buoyed by the confidence that battlefield victories provide. When an Australian unit employed an effective counter to Japanese attacks, Nishimura's division began working its way down the coast in a series of seaborne landings again outflanking their surprised opponent. By the 31st of January, the Allied defenders had retreated to Singapore and Yamashita's 25th Army was at Johore Baru poised for an attack on the fortress. The success of the Japanese force in Malaya was due in part to their unprepared and cooperative enemy. enemy. Early victories came against largely Indian units. Their inexperienced British officers did not inspire confidence and often did not speak Urdu, the command language of the Indian army. As a result, poor morale was widespread and orders for retreat were too often taken as a pretext for pell-mell withdrawal. Few units were trained or even interested in learning jungle warfare. More damaging to the British effort was the failure to destroy military facilities, particularly airfields, and the vast amounts of Churchill stores which fell into Japanese hands. So hanggang dito na lang yung episode natin for uh, History by Bike. Uh, at sana sa mga susunod na araw, uh, makalabas na ulit tayo, hindi na masyado nag-uulan. So uh, sana nag-enjoy kayo sa episode natin ngayon. Uh, paki-like, paki-share, paki-subscribe yung channel. And this is History by Bike from Casa Fortes, signing off.